We are here to the final, I'm trying to get this cord off my foot. There we go. Um, we are finally to the final step ladder. Our opening match based on seeding from the this morning's cashers round. Anthony Simon is your fourth seed, taking on Cortez Shank right here in front of us. And it uh, looks like we're going to have a battle of Thane, I'm guessing. And we're going to get a bird's eye behind the scenes view here. Simo, that's a fast pitch. And that is jam, and that's 10 back. Shank also using urethane, and that too is 10 back. Looks like about a little of the uh, fast pitch here this in the early going. it off his hand. Oh, okie dokie. Had a 7-10 there for a hot second, but the 7 falls, leaving only the 10. All right. And again, we've said it countless time and time again, the pattern had... had it's not exactly easy, and especially when it comes to spare shooting, so we see spares. Um, they're premium. And a conversion there by Cortez. Um, but yeah, folks, they uh, ran the lane Zamboni, uh, greased them up nice and nice and fresh for this uh, step ladder final. And uh, yeah, we'll see how uh, one of the best on tour uh, handles it here in frame number two. Loft up over light shake, boom, crack, pow. And again, as uh, Mr. Slimmer has already mentioned, official welcome back to the Agent Ong Open, the inaugural Agent Ong Open. This thing started way back on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, Phoenix. Uh, noon Eastern time. And it's Sunday at 3.14. And it's Sunday, 3.14 local. <laughs> and we're on the ladder. 6.14 Eastern. We are in the step ladder finals. Again, Anthony Simonson versus Cortez Shank. Simo will take a, a moment. He got into the his uh, approach. Something was on his shoe. Like something he could <laughs> he peel off it. and physically throw. <laughs> he removed it. And he's good to go. He is nestled closely to the gutter cat, as you can see on the right side. Minimal loft there. Wow. Acts it to hold, and it does. Mm -hmm. So, again, he sees something. These guys uh, taking the option for Thane on the fresh. Uh, Simo utilizing more loft there on the right lane. So, again, it's one of those things that whatever he's seeing, um, not seeing, and um, speaking of, I uh, had the opportunity to ask Briley about what he was seeing on five and six, you know, because he had that, we talked about that lane six in his uh, match before this round that Matt Zweig actually advanced from, and that looked pretty good, but uh, again, Thane being Thane, and that was a wrap time. Um, anyway, I asked Briley, I said, dude, I said, I got to ask you. He goes, what's up? I go, like the charcoal briquette that you tried to light lane six on fire with? And he goes, well, he goes, that pair had my lunch all week. Mm. And he goes, you saw that? He goes, I left two buckets over there. I go, yeah, he goes, I was still trying to burn a spot where I was trying to play. He goes, I couldn't get it to shape or do anything. And uh, so anyway, that's what he was seeing, and that's the reason why 
He used the super surface to try and create a spot and still couldn't get that spot open for him. So, and then he proceeded to tell me, he's like, bro, good seeing you, but I'm hungry. Me and my brother are going to go eat. <laughs> and out the door they went. Can't blame him for that. Correct. <clears throat> All right, Cortez Shank, great shot, wraps a 10, and he trails early here to Anthony Simonson. Matt Zweig is your number one seed. The number two seed will be Alec Keplinger. Yep. Who's standing right here to our left taking notes because he's in this next match. So he wants to see how this pair transpires now that, uh, like I said, they ran him fresh and had some practice on him. That looks to be a pretty good pitch. And that is 10. And so I will, uh, I have another tidbit for you all. Um, just because you guys see it, or maybe not see it. Uh, probably notice maybe on TV occasionally with uh, Simo. He's got the white towel, and it's got a little moisture to it. And so he only uses the wet rag when he's throwing urethane because oil slimes up on the cover stock, and he needs to keep his hands clean and tacky. So that's why he has the, the white towel. And see, not as much loft. So again, maybe there's an exception on that first shot there on 10. But uh, yeah. So anyway, that's the that's the tr trick, the secret s secret behind Simo and the the wet rag there. Um, just because when, only when he's and you see the other part too, um, the stack of chamois, the chamois in each hand, finishes, cleans his hand. That is only when using urethane. He does not do that when he uses reactive. Wow. I would have no idea. Yep. Four in a row. Looking for five. Bang. <clears throat> that is Yahtzee. interesting uh, tidbits of info. And oh, that's, sorry. And that's why I'm glad you're here because uh, those are the things that the, the small things that make a not only a broadcast but make a player, mm -hmm. right? And the viewers now, when the next time they see Simon on TV, right. they might look for those, those and things. It's another, and it's another thing, too, you notice, uh, and actually we had this conversation when he was in the office last week. Because um, we were throwing some urethane balls, doing some stuff. Shank for a double. Oh, oh Messenger yeah. gets it. Um, how many chamois they actually go through. Um, and you see Kyle Troop and Chris Vi and um, Belmo and all those guys. Those guys, in some cases, depending on what's going on, some guys can get a day out of the chamois because, again, they don't have the luxury of taking it home and washing it. Look at a day of a chamois. Some guy, like Simon said, there's times where he, he goes a chamois around. That's unreal. Just to, because he needs that absorption, you need to peel it off if you're trying to make sure that you have that same consistency shot and shot again. So. Hmm. Cortez. Pretty good. Pretty Oof. good. And Emil, that's why I asked him to come. I asked Roto Schlem to come because his knowledge is invaluable to this broadcast. Well, I mean, hey, listen. Uh, no, yeah, they're friends here. I don't know no, no, me around here. <laughs> no broadcast. Uh, th that's why analysts exist. And, uh, you know, my knowledge is solid. I'm not Roto Slim. And I would not have known that about Anthony Simonson. I do know about Simo is that he's arguably the best in the world. And he's looking for six in a row. Looks pretty good. There he is again. That's a good question, actually, from Linda Ardo. Can you wash chamois? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, so chamois, uh, those are actual leather. And even like ours and some of the other manufacturers, there's a, you know, like a piece of foam or something on the inside of it. Um, yeah, we recommend using best a uh, Simon was taking a re-rack there. Um, if you noticed uh, that wreck, whenever you looked up, the that one's a little bit better. But yeah, the four pin was off spot. Um, more to that here in a second. Simo nestles, like Emil said, snuggles up against the ball return here on the left lane. How about seven? Mm. Okay. It was close. Um, but yeah, uh, recommended for chamois. You can put them um, in a dishwasher 
just don't you know run it for a super long time. Use the hot water, um, the soap it'll help spray, and then as it dries, let it air dry for a little bit. Use a wire brush to help bring the surface of that chamois back to life. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way, um, you can use your uh, washing machine we recommend the dishwasher because it is a hotter water uh, and the sprays and then obviously it drains easier you don't want that gunky oil uh, residue in your obviously on your clothes so dishwasher makes more sense big opportunity here for cortez needs obviously to look pretty to stay near message, message. <clears throat> Well, you couldn't have picked a better opening match for your tournament. You Carl. Could not. Oh, my goodness. The entire stepladder. But if you open with Cortez and Anthony Simons, two of the best young players, and although we talked earlier about Simon being essentially a young veteran, uh, Cortez legit in that young stage of his career. Mm -hmm. And he has been on this level before. He's made a PBA show players championship a couple years back. He's won the New Mexico Open. Uh, last year, in fact, and other major victories, PBA regional titles. And this is a moment he is not uh, afraid of in whatsoever. Didn't like it. Wow. He shoved. The pitch black didn't say he didn't like it, though. And that was a very audible, oh, God, quote, unquote. <laughs> quote, unquote. Um, and again, folks, that's... Uh, you think about it, we've got Fresh. Uh, these guys are both throwing Thane, as we've now come uh, dubbed it. Um, <laughs> and it's a, yeah, those are the shots you get away with. Now, reactive, unless there's a super big puddle, you're not going to get away with that. I'm missing that far left. Um, and Simo, again, to maintain. That's the 10 pin match, folks. Bang! It's pretty good. Boom, 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 boom. You know, boom, boom. when you go back to the history of the eight squads opening game, I don't remember these scores. It's <laughs> a great point. It's on fresh. Gentlemen. Well, there's it's one. Unfresh. There's one item we should we should note on that. Uh, I'm gonna wait for Simo to throw this shot, and then we can get into it briefly. But you ran the practice more like a TV style practice. Did. And we'll get into that in a moment. To keep the lead. Oh, boy, that's hooking. Wow. The and holding. Simo, I don't know how to properly describe it, but it's not quite a curtsy, but he moves his legs in because he knows it's high and it, all the pins go down. Man. So, Carl, you, the practice session was more TV style, in my opinion, right? So you allow the three, I'm sorry, the one, two, Seeds to, go first. to go first on practice, which means they had a chance to, you know, set things up, hopefully, uh, and practice on it, and then the three for it, and each for five minutes. Needs it, Cortez. No, two pin. And I can tell you, just I'll give you a quick analyzation of that. That was one of those deals where that's. I've, Obviously, I've only seen Cortez a few times over time because, again, I don't attend to a, a lot of events, especially PBA or others anymore. Um, I'm usually at other types of events or whatnot. He got a little quick on that one, and that was the one that got a little right off his hand. And that seems to be his common miss whenever he gets into some of the spots I noticed in some of these other matches where he drops in the swing too, big, too fast, too quickly. His feet get fast. And that's his natural kind of rear up, and it kind of flips to the right. And that is when he gets into trouble. And again, like uh, Emil said, he's been in these situations before. He's experienced an, a unique thing, too. Urethane, he's not wiping the ball. Hmm. Tenth frame, Tez, you bet. Here's the situation, folks. 248 is the max. For Cortez, which obviously you know how important that ninth frame shot was. There is a possible chance at advancement for Cortez. It will involve another strike and at least nine pins. That would force Simo to go nine, nine out. And Cortez nope. said, nope. Not today. 
He will take a moment. Mm -hmm. Regroup. Go through the process again. You know, wipes the shoe. Wipes quick, the shoe again. Quick look at what's on the line, folks. There's the championship belt, left corner of your screen. And ten thousand dollars to the winner. Shank. Didn't shank Pretty that one. Pretty good. Cortez, it's only a matter of time before the success will follow him on the national tour, in my opinion. And again, I find it interesting, too, based on what I just told you about your thing balls <clears throat> and the guys on tour. You know, he's taking it off the ball return, even using the spares, depending on the spare, not wiping the oil off the cover. All right, four. 247 on the board. Samo needs a mark to advance. It was a very important double. I know we've been on our bowling mat today, but that's that. Mark to advance. He's on. Anthony Simonson will advance to face the number two seed, Alec Keplinger, here at the inaugural Agent Ong Open. Slim from, you know, Simo is super smart, right? He's already made mm -hmm. a ball change. Mm -hmm. Take a look at a different piece of your thing there, pitch mm -hmm. black. Um, I, was, I was just going to ask, what do you expect Simo to do based on your experience working with him when he's got a match locked up? So I, I haven't, you know, I, Simo came out actually after I was tour repping. Well, not on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, or you know, month. times we've talked and stuff like that, he's, like we said, he's... Uh, He's next level. He's reached that uh, that top shelf. Um, it's Anthony Simonson's going to move on to take on Alec Keplinger. Anthony defeats Cortez 279 to 247. Go ahead and take your two shots on each lane, Alec. And then just let us know if we're going to start or have uh, test start. So yes, yeah, Simon, like you said, he's. Uh, he got a few different urethane balls. And again, urethane's not always something for him. He does, uh, he always is in search mode, if you will. And, and it may look that, you know, he's got, I mean, you just posted 279, but he's also thinking what's going to happen next. He's also worried about not only what's happened in this match, but what the potential is moving forward. And so he's going to make sure that he's got his couple bases covered, if you will, um, so that he can be able to react and um, you know, be able to be able to react and maybe make a move faster than most because it's one of those things that it may seem and, it, and I'm telling you folks when it gets um, actually change balls. Just even, like I said, even even off of a strike. So it's one of those things that uh, not too many folks would actually do that, or too many players actually do those thing types of things. So it's a uh, um, yeah. Again, when you do it for a living, and like he says, it's my job. It's uh, what I do. I gotta understand what to do when, and not you know trust myself, and not guess. You know, try and try and stay ahead of the moves. So, and again, not all players are wired that way. Um, and some, and, and not saying that that has to be the right way, but um, like I said, there are just some that that's what they do, and um, you know, or they learned other things. <coughs> and Simon's actually going to help us with the uh, score corrections here because he's been around a long time. He's got it. <laughs> like I said, Simon, he's a, a chameleon when it comes to anything in a bowling center with scoring. You need something breaks in the back, he can go fix it. 
Uh, need to work on a lane. He's good at working on lane machines too. I've learned, um, and so he can uh, he either knows or um, has an idea of what is going on in the lane machine. So our number two seed here in the step ladder, Alec Eppinger, is choosing. Uh, he's going to start on the he left is, lane. He is going to start on the left lane. Top seed again, Matt Zweig. If you're just joining us, the number four seed. Was Cortez Shank, he just fell 279 to 247 to Anthony Simonson. Cap, former player of the year at Wichita State. Bang, the start. Pretty good. <clears throat> and so now, as we've talked about with the uh, the lane, uh, lanes being fresh and rerun, and it's one of those things that, uh, as you mentioned, practice was TV style. The top couple seeds were able to practice before three and four. Simon's going to step up here uh, again, sticking with the fast pitch here in frame number one. On his toes to get the leverage and yeah. So that's one of those things that now he's going to look at it and, and again, depending on how fast he's thinking or what he's seeing, because then Alec comes over, gets a couple shots, he's throwing your thing as well. Is going to be one of those things that's going to force him to jump to reactive faster or pitch black or make a move off of what just happened. Because again, he's watching his ball go through the pins. I think part of it is looking something on his shoe. He's dealing with the shoe right now. Um, so he's been looking for some additional slide uh, since I feel like towards the end of match play where he had put that, uh, put his slide foot underneath the ball return, trying to find a little extra dust. As you see him again, nestled up much like you get close to the fireplace during the holiday season. It's a delay. Oh, the seven pin. That's right, uh, Allen. That's a great point. Alec uh, and uh, Hope, they just made a trip or return, I should say, from uh, Costa Rica. That is correct. And uh, I understand Alec performed very well. We're having uh, talking about his experience, sharing a few stories. It was his first time, I believe, he and Hope, their first time there. Ed Smack, like who bowled this week, he also did. just came back. From I think he won uh, all of it. Yeah, he said he had like five or six trophies he collected with all the different stuff going on that night. Well, we'll take that. Yeah. So now we'll see Alec take his first shot here on lane 10, the right lane. Neil also did his thing there too, huh? Mm -hmm. Right lane. Kep. All right, early double. I mentioned this during match play, but uh, I think it was either before Kep's official squad, uh, his f uh, first official squad bowl in the event. Uh, I think it was after the sweeper, but we were just kind of talking and he was trying to figure out his game plan and wondering what was going to work based on what he had already watched. And at the time, your thing was not um, a for sure thing at the time, early Correct. in the tournament. Squads uh, four and five really debunked the myth that you cannot throw your thing. And really since then, folks, multiple people have thrown it. They've had success with it. And all we've seen so far is your thing in the stepladder final. Mm -hmm. Kaplan girl for three in a row. Indeed. Good. And again, I think what um, the one thing to, to bring in, especially with these bowlers, um, is the fact of they're using urethane, but you got to look at the touch and feel. It's not one of those deals, you know. And again, talking about Simo, Simo's trying to get because again, he's a, he's a little guy in stature, so and even though he's up on the approach, forward closer to the foul line, uh, throw the shot here. You see him up on his toe, and that's how he gets his leverage. Because again, it's kind of the, the little guys prior to him, like a Norm Duke, like a Pete Weber. <clears throat> They've got to use momentum and speed with their feet, and so we see someone get up on his toe. But again, it's a touch and feel with urethane, and, and the guys that are really good at using it have that. It's not one of those things you just huck it down there and hope to, you know, catch, you know, this and that. So. Another question about. Uh specifically about the right lane, but I'll get into it after this shot. Again, watch that right leg, folks. His right thigh. 
He said, oh boy, he got some help. The right lane, he seems to have a little bit more loft. Simo does. Have you seen anything differently why he might do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, it could be any number of things of what they're seeing. Um, and again, when you're playing that far to the right, um, you know, it's, uh, I can see it from sitting here. There are some ripples on the outside of that panel. Um, so maybe it's, you know, something he's try just trying to avoid with his ball. Let's see what Alec has here. For four in a row? Oh, no. Ten pin. Yes, sir. Um, oh, and again, it's one of those deals that, um, and looking at how they're attacking him, Simo's actually right. actually closer to second arrow so again we'll see how this transitions as well because Cortez was actually closer to and the touch okay he's gonna look at it and laugh <laughs> <laughs> 32 in the first that's something new um there's uh and we'll get that dialed in and, and fixed here. Yeah, they, I think you got it. They some got capacity. Control. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this, um, like I said, Cortez was actually farther right than what Alex is. Alec is. So we'll see what, um, see how this transpires. All right, kept back good. on it. And so yeah, we got to figure out the the weird scoring there. JJ is up at the desk. Well, <coughs> thankfully, we're up in an era there where we go. We were forced to uh, keep score by hand. Yep. Yeah. As I'm, uh, oh, that was a glitch you in see, something. See, I already went to Plan B. Ah, a boy. I didn't scores. even notice it. Yeah, I wasn't quite looking what you guys were talking about. And then you mentioned it. I'm like, oh, yeah, first thing yeah. I saw. I'm like, oh, 32. Good for him. Huh. Imagine that if you uh, all of a sudden the scoring just gave you whatever. Would you have? Well, I had seventy-eight in the first. I was like, like, what, what, yeah, what wait, would you what? request? Triple, maybe. Oh wow! What wrap, a ten pin wrap dime. And that was a fast wrap dime. I think Simo maybe he's saying he, maybe he should have taken a re-rack there. Yeah, and I, I think it's it's one of those things when you get into the when it's a one game match and you uh, we've seen plenty of re-racks throughout the week, but um, you know there's uh, you know he'll figure out the uh, paying closer attention to those things. You know, some bowlers don't pay as much attention. Others, like the slightest, if the slightest bit is off in their eye, they'll take the re-rack, and especially if they're limited. And I don't know if we have a limited re-rack option here. But, um, you know, this rack on nine is actually better than the one he re-racked on previously. On nine. Uh-oh. All right. So there you have that. And again, it's seemingly been a trend on that left lane that if they tend to have a tendency to miss, it uh, provides a little hold and love, if you will. So we'll see if Alec can maintain the pace he's on right now. Gets around a little bit more, makes it shape, and three mega spare double. So, yeah. 
Again, as I mentioned, he's you know a touch left, a little bit slower, a little bit more around it, um, more of a feel and, and touch type release currently with the Thane and currently with the lead. tough the lanes have been throughout the week when you get to the stepladder finals and when you give four really good players who are extremely smart and very high bowling IQ an opportunity to practice and try to set things up for themselves this is what you get mm -hmm. uh oh does remain out of trouble Simo throws it bad or you know, something I feel right. He will come back immediately, pick up that spare ball quickly, and get back at it. You know, this is uh, frustration, by the way. Um, and again, the couple couple decent shots to start. Um, obviously, the rack and the on ten, the preview shot. Gotta have. Oh, right. sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. And so, obviously, at this point in time, I mean, he's he's also in the spot where he knows his the deck stack against him. Indeed. He knows Alex got the upper hand. Um, yeah, so, and maybe it's a little bit too, you know, Simo, even though he's young, is still a veteran. So, maybe he's trying to utilize Chirpin to uh, get in the head of the kid. Gap has won a ton again at the collegiate level. Now he's on that path to mm -hmm. where he can begin to establish himself nationally, if you will. Still rolling. Seven out of eight. Ben Williams Jr. and Alec Keplinger. That was awesome. We got Roto Schlim. Ayo. And Anthony Simonson. gets back to what you mentioned when you have four good players break them down a certain way Simon was just gonna do the due diligence and step out and get out of the way um, break them down um, you know, Cubby even had a little bit of room and that's why he surprised himself on that shot on 10 and uh, yeah it's just you know it was a carry contest if you will you know Simo technically had that one bad shot you know the other couple shots were decent enough to strike just didn't carry. So, like we've said said throughout the week, that's the way the ball rolls sometimes. Oh, tickle trip nine. And again, the scoring didn't know what it was, so it gives him a set of left a head pin. So Alec gonna hop in and fix that score. And Simo's gonna finish out. Punches out, too little, too late. Again, Simo. You know, it's one of those things. Frustration. You can see it. And uh, we'll see if Alex sees anything or he's going to play 
Well, that's a pretty good shot about where he had been playing. And again, missed that one a little bit at the bottom. For what, for all intents and purposes, it was, you know, wasn't a, a top quality pitch that he had previously. So, but in the same breath, I can say, is this part of the transition now that we've had three players using urethane in that same general zone and gets a handful of it, converts it. So now yeah, let's see if he makes a move, tries anything else. And uh, yeah, so all the balls that have come over so far, Matt Zweig is also rocking the urethane. So we got uh, Thane being a thing, but uh, Alec is going to give a reactive a look. So we're going to have um, we're going to have Exotic Gem going down the lane here on the fill ball. Moves in, stands on top of it. Yeah. Oh, tickles the two, tickles the eight. And Anthony Simonson will take home the third place check. Matt. Okay. Okay, there you heard Theo, the tournament director. Um, as you mentioned, Matt Zweig being the high seed gets to come over and throw four shots. And uh, yeah, we'll see uh, how things shake out. And that right there, um, a little give you a little sneaky tidbit, and I know Emil didn't see it, um, but Alec did ask Carl and Theo if it was okay for him to freshen up the surface on his pitch block because it is now technically into another round, um, known as the championship round, mm -hmm. and the winner is going to take home ten thousand dollars on the title belt. Um, so, yeah, he just did freshen up the, his pitch black. Um, he threw the exotic gem in the fill. Um, maybe didn't like seeing Matt's using Thane kind of in that same spot. So we'll see what his thinking is on that. <coughs> but uh, he's grabbing a different Thane. And um, anyway, the, the reactive was enough of a look for uh, Alec for him to then go hmm, ah, speaking of Matt's going to take that same play and add a little surface he's got a global booyah which was a urethane ball um, made in Texas prior to um, gold 900 global moving up to Utah production so we'll see how this he just freshens the cover on it to see what it looks like and that seemed to see it a little bit better. So that uh, makes a little sense. And um, yeah, so it's two shots on the right lane. And we'll see what. Uh, is he sanding that? No, that is just a towel or a chamois. So again, he's a guy that's multiple chamois. It looked to be. Uh, chamois and uh, the oil off of it. Uh, hmm. Interesting. I feel like you lost that one a little bit. But anyway, the uh, other part of it with Cortez, like I said, it was even caught my eye in the fact that he didn't use a chamois at all. all right. Just throwing the shots. Yep. All right, right, title match. match. How about your way, folks? Thank you to all who are watching and have supported throughout the week. Please hit the thumbs up on this event, if you don't mind. And if you have not subscribed to Bullstream TV, please support Carl Long and the Agent Long Open. Make sure you follow those channels, uh, social channels specifically for next, perhaps for next year. Big thanks to our sponsors, Team Agent Long, my home group, Create Proof Print, Unwind Wellness Redefined, WeSpeakWiFi.com, Brightside Catering, Chef Adam Allison, travel 24-7. First shot. Title match. Keplinger. Oh, uh, my. Good break. Go. And again, that's a product of 
scuffing the ball, getting the, getting the oil buildup off of it. Um, yeah, so that usually tends to be the case with, with Thane whenever you fresh on the surface. Um, the first one usually hooks a little bit before it uh, calms back down, if you will. Spare is converted. So, nine spare. And so now we will see Matt take his first shot here in the title match. If we wanted to give Matt Zweig the credit to start the urethane train, we could possibly do so. He was the first person, at least that we saw, mm -hmm. try it way back on squad one. And there he is. Likes it. Now, he wasn't going to be the only one, certainly, to try it. He was just the first person that we saw try it with our own eyes. Correct. And, you know, it's one of those things, uh, the, the Thane train, if you will. Um, uh, because, again, it's... I think there was uncertainty. You know, we just knew the distance of the pattern didn't. And my man grinding away with the chamois and the towel, <laughs> kind of getting getting that buildup off there. So, Let's see what we got here in the second frame. Take a look at the pin cam on this shot. See, like it, Blaze. Ooh. That's ten. Vicious. Sid Vicious, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah, a little Sid Vicious blonde hair WWE. thing going on, too. WWF, so WWE you watch reference. Oh, yeah, man. You didn't hear me dropping the Stone Cold, all this stuff we were told when you handed me that belt <laughs> on Wednesday night. <laughs> Do you hear a glass break? That might be the closest thing I'll ever get. Well, hey, hopefully yeah. they enjoy the belt, whoever wins between Alec and Matt. Another voice you hear is Carl Ong, the creator. Title match of the inaugural Agent Ong Open. Cap. It's the light mixer to fall there. Mm -hmm. Alec Keplinger, a surprised uh, Roto Schlem with the knowledge that Cap has a mother who is a USPC Hall of Famer, a nine time PWBA champion, and a major winner. So you're saying there's a little bit of lineage right there. There is lineage Maybe. in Sandra Joe wow. Shirey. Now, Kep, of course, created his own history. Mm -hmm. Already dominated the collegiate ranks through time. American Player of the Year won a national championship at Wichita State. Little weak there on the ten pin. Again, thank you to everyone here. I see Robert and Inland Empire bowling tournaments and DJ Turnup and Juan and Leia and uh, Family Ties. Shout out to Family Ties and UBASA and Heavy Metal and James and John and all. Chris Pulliam is here and Brian and Brandon and everyone. Thank you so much for your support. And on behalf of Carl, I know he thanks you too. Absolutely. Appreciate you all coming in and watching the what is the culmination of a lot of hours for all of us so thank you for tuning in and whoever wins this match right now earned it all mm -hmm. facts it's been a long week it feels like a week week but we did get started on Thursday squad one and two six game squads we had a uh, the Brooklyn. I'm sorry, the sweep the rack sweeper. Shout out to Brooklyn Bra, Big Mike. Then the action match between Robert Smith and Greg Thompson Jr. That was just on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Three additional squads on Friday. Three more on Saturday. The Desperado last night. Cashers round match play, and now a title match. Zweig. Oh, mm. wow. how about that? Tickle, tickle, tickle. Little mm -hmm. breaky break. He will take a step back and look. 
Okay. So I don't want to set, by, set by itself. Yeah, because he didn't touch that. Okay. There we go. <coughs> Double checking the rack here. And now he's going to grind away on that urethane ball. Get the build up off of it. Got a chance. Got a hold. Oh, right now. Both players have broken down splits early mm -hmm. in these first uh, now three and a half frames. Zwei has uh, his sister Leia and his mom Lisa in attendance watching. One thing I've learned about the Zwei family, they support one another. Whenever Matt is bowling anything, his mom is in the chat. Yes. Whenever Matt is bowling anything, his sister is in the chat. Yes. Or here. Or or here. Yeah. <laughs> or here. Or actually yeah. live in person, <laughs> for sure. Converts the spare. So again, we got a uh, pressure cooker, if you will, here in the title match. And we'll see how this... Uh, Plays out down the stretch. If you are just joining us again, title match, Agent Ong Open. The opening match featured Anthony Simonson and Cortez Shank. Simo defeated Shank 279 to 247. Cap then defeated Simo 256 to 238. There's one. That's, That's a good. good one. Good to good. So again, as we talked about, uh, you mentioned breaking up splits, but now it's the fact of he has yet to strike on this left lane this match. So does the Dutch 200 stay intact, or will he figure out how to catch a double here? Well, yeah, he's, he's certainly going to throw a good shot because I think nothing about his now game and a half has said Otherwise, he yeah. won't do that. Right. The lanes for both players and really everyone, our stepladders we talked about, they know what's going on on the lanes on the pair. Four double. Bang. That's pretty good. Pretty good. And there goes the Dutch 200. I tell you what, if we got all the way to the title match and we got a Dutch 200, it, it kind of would have been par for the course because we got we got even for the main event number. Uh, we had a tie, the Desperado, and then um, what was our uh, what was there was one other? Oh, our, our match play number was what did that end up being? Mm. Well, I guess if you take the last game and everyone's two forty or better scores, <laughs> that that counts too, in, right? Shout out to uh, Sarah Klassen. Make sure you guys go subscribe to her channel. She bowled very well this you week. Like it. Pretty good pitch. There's another 10 pin. Now you see Matt coming back and flip, flipping that wrist a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, just missed it. Matt involved in a new coaching venture with uh, Jordan Asberg. Helping people all around the area. Former collegiate player. ASU. He too chasing that uh, that PBA tour as well. Mm -hmm. He's out there this past season. Yep. And so that and you know, looking at the scoreboard, that's if you if you only get two misses, obviously back to back is a good placement. Or in the case of for Alec, frames one and three, it's actually not a bad space either. Um, because again, if it's you know, double spare, double spare, or three bagger spare, three bagger spare. You know, it's all about where your misses are. 
in reference to not striking, I guess. Let me clear that by. Six frames wide. Mm, boy, that was close to a bucket. Yep. Leaves to it. And the reason I say that is um, coming back to give you guys another quick analogy off of that is Jeff Carter when he set the average record of 261. Um, there you think about it, you can only miss twice a game. Because if you miss in the wrong frames, you're not averaging 261. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. Um, it's, it's all about placement. <clears throat> in uh, that right there so three bagger 10 pin 10 pin and now a two eight so again it was one of those things that uh alex on the left lane a little bit different and obviously the right lane is starting to transition now as well so and looks good runs right it down right spare Again, the winner to receive $10,000 by earning the top seed. Matt was the number one seed after the cashers round. He was guaranteed 5000 if he were to finish in second. In second place, receives 5000 Third, 3000 Fourth, 2000 46 players advanced to the cashers round this morning. The load of cash was 550 and that's just tournament winnings, not including all of the available side pots, brackets, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good. Oh, slinging wood. Could be the one, Slim. Yeah, it very well could be. That could be the one. Re rack on nine. <laughs> yeah, good good call on re rack. That was needed that one. They had a bucket and you had a couple pins over there and a couple pins over there. So thank you for the recap of the prize fund. So you know the top four is you know chopping twenty thousand. So overall, with the sweeper and the side pots, we paid out over fifty thousand dollars for this weekend. Fantastic. That's absolutely That's awesome. good for your first time out. I appreciate that. Cap. He's got some opportunities. Can he make it four? Mm. Mm. Saw that ball drive right through the nine pin. <clears throat> now Keplinger has turned the tables after his slow start and slow start in these champion or in these matches in the step ladder have been nine spares. I'm not sure anyone's uh not had an unblemished scorecard throughout mm. these matches. Mm. I don't believe it's happened based on, uh, yeah, that definitely didn't happen in game one. I'm pretty sure it didn't happen in match number two. Where do you get that at in the step ladder finals? That's why in a must strike situation and you saw him immediately say whoa uh oh I'm just letting it be known because this is documented it was not me it was not you this time okay thank you why do you think I'm picking and choosing when I open my mouth <laughs> I'm 100% well, my friends it's what I do for a living so it's <laughs> part of the job <laughs> the galactic eclipse is in full effect and still exists it just moves seats it's a good question there, Jonathan. Uh, the format, this is a standard step ladder, so one game matches. And Simonson defeated Shank, 279-247. Keplinger, Keplinger defeated Simonson, 256-238. Zweig in a must-make scenario. What do you got, big fella? Oh, mm. it's just shoved. And that might be it, potentially. Hey, we've said that before. You are correct. Most random things have happened so far this week. So, 
Still 2.30 out Anything there. Anything is possible. After watching the round of 16 and how some of those matches played out, Literally, I've seen everything this tournament. Mm -hmm. It's still 2.30. And I'm for sure now that that is the first open by any competitor in any match here in the step line of finals. You are correct. After the great start for Matt. Front three, a couple single pins. Four. Now we're getting some noise from up on the high end as the league bowlers are coming in to play this evening. So Matt's going to reboot, take his time. Pretty good. Pretty good. I would agree. It's a big shot there. Hello, hello, Barry. That's a uh, great, great nugget of info. That's a long-term admirer since his early youth. You know, that's been a, a small theme here. Shout out to uh, Ed Godboot. I met Ed this week. He was the uh, former youth director at 4th Street Bowl. Good friends with Carl on here and Tony Reyes, the late, great Tony Reyes. Mm -hmm. Talking about his youth involvement. Still is coaching youth and, uh, at every level, so. You know, seeing you know, folks like Barry pop in and take a look at Matt and other players. Thank you for doing that. Kaplinger. Post it. 5-10. I'm all like I got a little too right. Just a touch, and uh, I also got to throw it out there. I mean, the the, the fact of there's been a lot of thing going on lane in that same zone, so you got to think mm. that the carry down effect is, even though these guys are wiping it with the exception of Cortez, even so, the material picks it up but also displaces down lane because it doesn't necessarily absorb into the cover like it does on a reactive ball. So you got to think that there may be a little bit of that there starting to pop through. Kaplinger in the number two seed, he earned it. He was the number two after the cashers round. So these are the two best down. players, <coughs> two best players after four games of the catchers round this morning. Again, uh, their qualifying totals were dropped for the catchers round this morning. So everyone started anew. All 46 players who advanced yesterday from yesterday to this morning had their pinfall totals dropped. So everyone started anew. And these two players separated themselves in the top two of the said catchers round. Matt's in a way of shaking his head, so some frustration overload going there. Thinking about the past few frames. We'll see if Alec can stay clean. Looks pretty good. Well, what a shot. back. Mads Y shot 298 today. Did you know that? He did. Last game, the cashers round. In this building? In this building. 1027 for four. Wow. Learned something every day. He must have, he had to be up to the high end. He was on the uh, on the high end. Because right, for game four, we didn't hear anything or see anything, and I could see about to, clearly to about 19 and 20. 21, 22. So he must have been up there. <coughs> well, so Zwei's going to finish first. Obviously, ninth frame first and foremost. He still has 230 on the board. There is a path for a dove still. Needs it. Pretty good. Oh, there Pretty it is. Pretty good. Great shot. Kind of had that, almost like that. A mini bow look like, okay, are you going to carry? Yeah, I mean, and it was one of those of execution-wise. He threw that run crisp and clean, posted the shot, got off his hand. You see him taking the re-rack, you know, going through release, 
just kind of think about the, the task at hand right here. But anyway, that shot right there on 10 was probably physically executed, probably the best shot of the game, if you will. <clears throat> there are a lot of scenarios that could take place based on the scores. And again. needs to put two on the board in this 10th frame to give himself the best possible chance. Let's it go. Seven tickle, pin. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Wow. What a late pull of the seven. That's a hit that really didn't happen a lot this week. We talked about seven pins and specifically for righties. Light mixer. If you got a seven pin to fall, you must have been living right. You're right, because we <laughs> saw the uh, pretty much every uh, seven pin left every possible way. Some swishing two, three, four pins at it, some over the tops, some fast around it, some mess, you know, head pin in front of it. We saw the the largest variety of those. Huge shot here. Does he like it? Hey. He <clears throat> the three, four, six, ten split in frame seven. For a moment, looked like the weight kept, had picked up the pace and the steam. That map may have been done at that point. Now. So I a strike away from putting up 230, which would force Keplinger to throw the first strike in the 10th to win the Agent Ong Open. Needs a strike to force that. Does he like it? There it is. There it is. That fly sets the stage. Back five for 230. Pretty solid, pretty solid. But again, as you mentioned, the resume for this young lad stepping up on 10. He's been in these moments before. He has. At various levels. Various levels. A lot of times there's been a team of shockers behind him when he has stepped up in these moments. He has tossed strikes, doubles, and even triples to win tournaments, titles, etc. And now for $10,000, Alec Keplinger, a strike to win. It's pretty good. For the dub. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And Matt Zweig, the hometowner with his family in attendance, takes home the inaugural agent on open. Talk about a change of events. It just now hit him, shaking his head. How about that? I tell you, well, we just talked about it. And to the other side of it, clean game. Clean game indeed. He will fire it down. Of course, the frustration <coughs> certainly from Kep. It doesn't take away from what he did to get to this point. He will take second. He will take home $5,000. But the winner is Matt Zweig, the inaugural Agent right, on Open, Open champion. Big check presentation as well as this awesome champion. Okay. So 
I hate to run, but hey, do you think? I'm going to go. Uh, <laughs> I got to go drop off a rental car and go catch a flight. So again, thanks for the fun. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, Slim. Really appreciate you. Appreciate man. you, man. Let's all congratulate Matt Sweet, your inaugural Agent on the Open champion, taking home ten thousand dollars. He just gets the big check for keeping the low one. Championship check and championship belt. And there is the incredible Agent Ong Open championship belt. Carl, would you like to say anything and then we'll hand it over to Matt? Thank you all for supporting this tournament. It was an unbelievable start for an inaugural year. This has been overwhelming. I know it's heavy, so <laughs> I'll, uh, can you hear me? 
Oh, you can go ahead, take your time, take your time, adjust, adjust, push that, uh, push that headset. There you go. All right, can you hear me? Yep. It's a little quiet, though. A little quiet? Yeah, they started blowing some stuff louder. How about now? Yep, better. All right, uh, Match Live, uh, this is your camera. So oh, you I look see. here, and uh, I got you covered after that. All First right. of all, congratulations. Thank you. Um, when we started this tournament, I think you bowled the very first swat. Yep. And I saw you kind of fiddling on the gutter, and I, we, you were the first person that we saw kind of see if your thing was in play. Um, you come back, the next squad end up at plus 60, I think. Great run. And then you handle it again in the catcher's round today. 298 on the end. Uh, just this pattern, this tournament, all of the above. And I know what you've been working on bowling on tour what does this win mean for you uh, as a person and certainly now as a as the competitor that you are uh, it validates the work you put into it you know I I'm in a bowling center every day um, I'm coaching giving lessons now I practice every time I'm there I'm, you know working hard and you want to see the results when that happens and on tour this year maybe didn't have the best results besides the doubles and you know, it's good to nice it's good to put up a nice win this, this is definitely my biggest win you know it's uh, it's good. It's, I'm all over the place. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> a lot of emotions. Certainly expected in these moments. I mean, just talk about those emotions, right? What do you feel? Your your mom's here. Your sister's here. Yeah, it's and I so know special. family means a lot to you. What what does that mean for to have them here and watch this in person? Oh, it's incredible. I wouldn't wish anything else. It, especially it was her birthday a couple days ago. We had a great day. Um, you know, want to put up a great win for her. Uh, we recently just lost our, our grandmother as well. So we talk about her watching from the heavens, and I think she tumbled that seven pin over in the tent. Um, so it means a ton. Uh, it's everything. Uh, the championship match, certainly, and you earned that by being the number one seed. Uh, you start well, front three, kept, uh, spare, strike, spare, and then, of course, he goes on a, uh, on a four bagger. In the seventh frame on that right lane, obviously, you saw some early hook there. What happened on that shot, and what did you see? Uh, so I went light a couple times there, and I thought the right lanes had been earlier and tighter the whole week, uh, and especially that right lane. Um, so I said, okay, let's just make sure we catch this one a little bit, and it hooked about 10 feet sooner. So that was a little shocking to see. Um, made the move off that, and then it happened to work out. And so we get to the point, obviously, where you're going to finish first. You know the situation. I'm assuming you knew the situation. Yes. You strike out, you shoot 230, you force him to have to throw the first strike in the 10th. Yeah. Uh, for you, how many times had you uh, practiced that moment, um, gone through that moment mentally in your head? You know, it's like, like we always talk about we're kids, right? We need a double in the 10th. We need a triple in the 10th right. to win. How many times had you gone over that, a scenario similar, and then watch it play out for you to win? Uh, Almost every time I practice, we have one of our uh, one of our drills is to shoot 250 before you leave the center, and a lot of times you got a double intent to do it. Um, and I had some peace of mind in the ninth and tenth. I wasn't even that nervous. It was more so if I don't get 40, I don't win. So, you know, it's every shot's do or die at that point. I'm either going to strike or I'm not. So, you know, let's let's just try to throw a good one and see what happens. Are well, you holding this large championship belt? Yeah, this thing's heavy, man. <laughs> I uh, I see it in person and, and got a chance to hold it. Uh, you just said this is kind of the biggest win for you. Uh, what are the future goals now? I know they don't change, but just tell the people what, what are your future goals as you continue to climb this, this bowling ladder, if you will. Yeah, um, I'd like to make a show next year. Um, I'd like to be exempt for the year after that, you know, on tour, uh, win, win a couple regionals. Uh, those goals, like you said, those goals don't change, but it just gives you more validation that those goals are possible. Uh, Matt, any, any final thoughts, shout outs, anything you'd like to say? Yeah, uh, love to shout out Carl and Theo and everyone that helped run this tournament. Uh, it was an amazing tournament, and the bowlers didn't know what to expect. Um, so we think it's going to go okay, and it, it went <laughs> phenomenally. So really impressed with how it went, and uh, glad to be holding this belt. Yeah, it looks great on you, my man. Hey, congratulations, and uh, go enjoy it with your family. Cool. Thank you, man. That is Matt Zweig, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of the inaugural Agent Ong Open, folks. And after a week that began on Thursday, uh, Thursday morning, really Wednesday, 
with uh, setup and all of that stuff for me, but certainly for Carl, this has been a 300 and essentially 65 day uh, situation for him. So I'm very happy for Carl and Kathy and his entire family, uh, all the work certainly that they put in. Uh, man, you know, it takes a lot certainly to run a tournament and uh, which I have no idea except I see it from this vantage point and I know uh, it's certainly not easy. So we appreciate what Carl uh, certainly has put together. Uh, obviously, we'll find out if we will have an additional one, certainly. And I have to imagine, I'd have to imagine uh, that we will. And, uh, well, folks, I don't know what else to, uh, I don't know what else to tell you. I, I think that's it, right? There's, there's no more bowling. We have a winner. We have a champion. And it uh, looks like I'll, I'll give you a couple more photos or some pictures to leave you with here. Uh, I talked about his family, Matt's family, and his mom, his sister, and certainly some other supporters now all with him as we close this thing on out. There's his sister, Leia, in the pink hoodie, his mom in the maroon hoodie to the left. We got uh, meat out there, and of course, Matt Zweig. Uh, Mike, final results, Matt Zweig. Matt Zweig, the winner, $10,000. The runner-up, Alec Keplinger, he takes home $5,000 for his efforts. Third place belongs to Anthony Simonson. He took home 3,000 and fourth place, Cortez Schenck took home $2,000. 46 players advanced to the cashers round. They all made money. The load of cash was $550. Certainly would be remiss if we did not thank all of the sponsors who played a role uh, in this wonderful tournament. Team Agent Ong and my home group, Create Proof Print, Travel 24-7, WeSpeakWiFi.com, Brightside Catering, Unwind Wellness Redefined. Bowling Dynamics, East Valley Fans and Blinds, Burke Brothers, I Am Bowling, Ramsey Auto Center, Angela Zebert, and uh, our wonderful swim instructor. Folks, that is going to do it for me. My name is Emil Williams Jr. Big thanks to uh, Chris Schlemmer. Man, Roto Schlem was great. It's my second time getting a chance to work with Schlem, and uh, you know we, we weren't scheduled to work together. Uh, he just happened to be at two events that I was at, uh, and, and he offered his help and wanted to sit in, and uh, I really appreciate him uh, bringing some additional insight and knowledge for a person certainly who is well-versed in our industry, has worked with the best, and uh, still works with the best in regards to Storm Roto Grip. He is the brand manager of that brand. I want to thank all of our guests this week. Uh, Brianna Cote, Hope Gramley, Brandy Calderon, Mike Calderon. Uh, I know I'm forgetting a couple of individuals, but I appreciate all of them. Uh, big thank you to all of you wonderful viewers who were supportive, certainly, of uh, not only Bullstream TV, but certainly the Agent Ong Open, which is most important uh, in this situation. Uh, want to thank, certainly, again, Bolero and Bolero Kyrene the entire staff here for all that they have done to make sure that this tournament went off very well. JJ, Amanda, uh, Jody, Bobby, uh, Mike, and everyone in between who had a hand and played a role. We thank you so much. And uh, I'll thank you guys again. It's, it's fun, and, but it's much better when we got a nice audience. You guys are great this week, and uh, we will see you soon. So. For all involved, for the final time from Bolero Kyrene, the checks officially have been handed out. Matt Zweig, the inaugural Agent Ong Open Champion. This has been a presentation of said Agent Ong Open Tournament. You watched it live and only on Bull Stream TV. Good night, folks.